hello friends uh, in this video we will discuss every uh, single detail about patterns used in metal casting operations okay so before going to the patterns let us try to understand uh, what, what are molds we know that uh, there are two different uh, types of mold available in our last uh, lecture we have seen the open and the closed molds now uh, the open molds are used to produce very simple parts such as this while for uh, creating complicated parts uh, like this we need to uh, have closed molds now let us try to understand why complicated uh, metal parts cannot be created using open molds okay so let us try to assume we want this metal casting as our final output so we have to create a wooden pattern first now if the patterns height is more it becomes very difficult to withdraw it from the mold cavity it is because while withdrawing the mold may break so if a better way is to divide divide the pattern into two halves and create two mold cavities now what will happen is that uh, when we close this we will get the final shape of the uh, casting metal casting so uh, patterns can be of numerous types okay however in this video we will discuss four important types only okay so let us proceed the first pattern is the solid pattern suppose we want to cast a very simple part like this then a solid pattern can be used <clears throat> but when the complexity of the part increases then it is a very uh, then it is a better idea to go with these types of split patterns here we divide the shape into two parts one half in one molding box called the cope while the other uh, other part goes in another molding box called the uh, drag and finally finally when we join these two boxes we get the full shape of the pattern as we saw earlier then comes the match plate uh, match plate patterns this uh, plate contains uh, one half of uh, pattern in the cope while the other part is kept in the drag these plates are usually made of aluminum or steel okay now then comes the gated patterns where the gates are uh, a part of the pattern itself that is the operator does not have to cut the gates manually thus it save, saves a lot of time now multiple patterns can be fixed to the runners side sidewise and when we pour molten metal the metal will flow through this uh, through this sprue then the runner and finally into the individual patterns through the in gates okay uh, these are suitable for industry industries where uh, maximum uh, production of parts is requ required okay now now the next question is what materials can be used to make these patterns pattern materials should be easy to fabricate they should not soak uh, much amount of mo moisture from the sand and the surface quality should be uh, somewhat good i mean the surface finish okay and uh, the final thing is that final characteristic is that the uh, materials should be lighter so by satisfying all these criteria we found we find that usually woods plastics and some metals can be used for pattern making uh, or to make the pattern usually uh, wood from pine teak or uh, mahogany are uh, trees are preferred okay okay so now one more important aspect of pattern making is the pattern clearance or allowance so what is the pattern allowance um, suppose we want to create a metal part of this shape so my pattern has to be slightly oversized than the actual dimensions that i need now why is that there are two reasons behind this behind making the pattern slightly bigger than the actual casting the first is that we have to provide shrinkage allowance okay usually what is this shrinkage allowance usually metals shrink during solidification so what we have to do is we have to provide some extra dimension to the patterns so that after shrinkage the castings actual uh, size can be achieved so basically there are three types of shrinkages first the liquid shrinkage uh, liquid shrinkage is nothing but the con contraction of liquid from the pouring temperature to the freezing temperature then after that the, in the second phase in the second uh, part it is the phase change shrinkage that is the contra contraction the metal contracts during change of phase from liquid to solid from liquid metal to solid and finally in the third phase 
that is the solid shrinkage uh, metal uh, co contracts during um, contraction from uh, solid uh, so solid casting uh, from uh, from freeze freezing temperature to the room temperature so the first two shrinkages can uh, can be overcome with the help of risers in gating system which we will design uh, dis um, discuss in the next lecture while for the last shrinkage the pattern allowances are provided okay so now the second reason why we need oversized pattern is to provide machining allowance so what is this machining allowance see try to understand this usually the surface finish of the final product we get uh, after metal casting is not very good so to improve the surface finish uh, we need to do some machining operations like grinding turning or some other surface finishing operations on this and when we do all these operations basically what what we are doing we have to remove some extra materials from the surface okay so mach uh, machining is uh, now one more reason why machining is done is to maintain a very tight dimensional to tolerances so by uh, only by using metal casting you cannot achieve high dimensional accuracies so uh, after that machining can be done now finally one more thing is that um, is there called the pattern draft usually if any pattern has a long vertical section it becomes very difficult to remove it from the mold in this cases a tapered draft like this is provided in the pattern uh, patterns vertical section so that we can easily withdraw the pattern without breaking the sand mold okay so this was all about draft and this was uh, all about uh, the different technical aspects of the pattern we will stop the video here so um, if you have any queries you can ask in the comment section and please don't uh, forget to subscribe this channel to keep up uh, to stay updated with more videos thank you